Yahweh, Lord. Often pronounced Yahweh, this is the most frequently used name of God in the Old Testament, and it is commonly translated as Lord with all capitals. Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am, and he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. This name was considered so sacred to Israel that they would never pronounce the name. It was too holy. Instead, they used the name Adonai, Lord, instead when reading the name Yahweh. In fact, around the 9th century AD, the vowels of Adonai were combined with Yahweh to make the artificial name Jehovah, which became the spoken way of saying Yahweh for the Jews. Jehovah was popularized in early English translations of the Bible, such as the King James Version, but it is not the correct way to pronounce the divine name. What does the name Yahweh mean? The name Yahweh means that God is eternal, unchangeable, and represents a covenant relationship. Next, we will look at compound forms of the word Yahweh. Yahweh Jireh, the Lord will provide. Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Abraham names the place of provision Yahweh Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. Those who are in covenant relationship with God shall lack no provisions because he will provide. Yahweh Nisi, the Lord is my banner. The name Yahweh Nisi is given from the context of warfare. The Amalekites and Israel were at war, and as long as Moses had his hands raised, they were winning. Moses' hands being raised seemed to represent his prayers and, therefore, dependence upon the God of Israel. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. When Israel fought, God went before them. He led the way and he was their banner. This is not just true for Israel, but it's also true for you. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Lord is your banner and he goes before you to bring you victory through Jesus in the new covenant. Yahweh Rapha, the Lord who heals. Yahweh Rapha is a name used of God by Israel while they were in the wilderness. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. God also heals us. It is part of his character. God is a healer, again, through Jesus, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, in the New Covenant. Yahweh Shammah, the Lord is there. Yahweh Shammah is the name given to the New Jerusalem, a future city that was prophesied by Ezekiel through a vision. Ultimately, this name speaks of God's special presence with the people of God. Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 35. It was round about 18,000 measures, and the name of the city from that day shall be, The Lord is there. This truth of God being present with his people is still true today under the new covenant. God has indwelled every believer, and he will abide in them forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19-20 to 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The Lord's presence is with you right now, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Yahweh Roi, the Lord is my shepherd. Yahweh Roi is the name that David uses of God in Psalm 23. Psalm chapter 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You need a shepherd that leads, provides, and protects you. A shepherd that gives you rest and makes sure that you lack nothing. Our Lord is not just a shepherd. He is the good shepherd. He provides for you, cares for you, and even gave his life for you. Yahweh Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. Yahweh Sidkenu was the name given by God in the book of Jeremiah for the Messiah. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 5 to 6. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Jesus, the Messiah, is the righteousness of the nation of Israel. He is the one that will eventually turn them from their sins and give them a new heart to follow him. However, this is what Jesus has already done for us. Christ took our sins while on the cross and gave us his righteousness. 
It is on the basis of Christ's righteousness that we are justified before God. Yahweh Shalom, the Lord is peace. Yahweh Shalom is the name given by Gideon to the Lord. Judges chapter 6, verses 22 to 24. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, for thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Abiezrites. Similarly, we do not have to be afraid of the eternal wrath of God. Christ bore the wrath of God so we could have a right relationship with him. We have peace with God and the peace of God never ends. Like Gideon, who accepted God's word of peace while facing the prospect of death, you must, in obedience, choose not to be anxious as you trust God's words to you. Your peace is found in Jesus. Yahweh Saboeth, the Lord of hosts or the Lord Almighty. The name Yahweh Saboeth reflects God as the ruler of the angels, the armies of heaven. Psalm chapter 46 verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. The phrase Lord of Hosts pictures God as a warrior and one who fights for us and protects us. God is always protecting you with angels. They are spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. God will guard you with his angels in all your ways, eating, drinking, sleeping, working, etc. Elohim. Elohim is a general name translated God in the Bible. It is the second most used name of God in the Old Testament. The word El comes from a root that means strong or power and therefore has the connotation of strong one or mighty leader. Because Elohim's root means power or might, the name will commonly be used in verses that demonstrate the power or awesomeness of God. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Your God is Elohim, the mighty God, and there is no one stronger than him. Nothing is impossible for him. Look at some compound words that come from El. El Shaddai, God Almighty. El Shaddai is a name used when God promises to give Abraham a son at the age of 99. Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. What that scripture shows is that God was declaring to Abraham through his name that he was about to do something impossible by bringing about the birth of Isaac. That was despite the fact that Abraham and Sarah were past what many considered an appropriate and healthy age to have a child. Your God is almighty, and he can do anything if you believe. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 to 21. Now unto him that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. El Elyon, Most High or Most High God. The name El Elyon means the Most High. El Elyon is the name that designates God as the sovereign ruler of all the universe. This name brings about some comfort to you because it shows that God is the head of all things. Your Father is ruler over all. There is nothing on the earth that happens apart from His awareness. He is the sovereign over all things. Similarly, look at what Nebuchadnezzar says about the Lord Most High. Daniel chapter 4, verses 34 to 35. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Since God is the Most High, then he is worthy of all glory and honor. El Roi, the God who sees. Genesis chapter 16, verse 13. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God, seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? In this scripture, Hagar was speaking about God. Hagar recognized God's faithfulness in watching over her and her child. El Roi means that God is omniscient. He sees and knows all things and is always watching you with love like a parent to their child. God watching over you brings provision, protection, and favor. Psalm chapter 1, verse 6. 
For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. El Eshad, the one God. This is a declaration of monotheism, which is the belief in one God. Malachi chapter 2 verse 10. Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Back in history, many believed in numerous gods. We can see this amongst the Greeks, for example. To stand up and say there's only one God is a very big statement. To Israel, God was the one God and every other God was false. El Ishad is a name of God in the Bible that means that there is one God. Adonai, Lord, Master, or Owner. Adonai is the third most used name of God in the Old Testament, and it is a plural noun similar to Elohim. The name could be translated Lord or Master. Psalm chapter 8, verse 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. This verse of scripture shows that not only was Yahweh God, but that he was also the master of all people. There are many people around the world who recognize the God of the Bible as God, but will not make him Lord and master of their life. James chapter 2 verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Worship and adore him as God, but also follow and submit to him as master, for he is good and loves you. Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel was one of the names used for Jesus, the Messiah. It means God with us or among us. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. The name speaks of the incarnation. The God of heaven came down to earth in the form of a baby. God became a man not only so that he could save you, but also so that he could understand and sympathize with you. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 to 16. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We have a God that understands weakness. He is Emmanuel, God with us, God that understands. Emmanuel is God, and therefore he can give you grace. He can minister to whatever problems you have or are facing in your life. Be encouraged and know that the name Emmanuel tells you that God cares, he understands, and that he wants to willingly give you help, mercy, and grace. New Testament names. Let us now look at the names of God used in the New Testament. Theos, God. Theos is the most common name used of God that we find in the New Testament. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Romans chapter 9 verse 5. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Curios, Lord. Curios can mean Lord, Sir, Master, or Owner. It emphasizes authority and supremacy. When you call God Lord, it means you recognize His authority and you will also submit to it. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Jesus must not only be our Savior, but also our Lord. Despotes, Master or Lord. The name Despotes emphasizes the idea of ownership. A despot is a king, ruler, or master with absolute power. We can see in God's word when referencing a slave to master scenario. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. The word master in the scripture is the word despotes. We can see this reference to absolute power again in Revelation chapter 6 verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Even Jesus is called a despot. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. We can see the absolute authority of God, but also that we are his servants. Philippians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi, 
with the bishops and deacons. You have been bought with a price. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Everything you are and have belongs to God. We must always recognize that we are but humble stewards of the resources of God. We will be held accountable for how we steward our time, family, friendships, careers, and even God's word. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1-4. to Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of a man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. All that you are and have is for God's glory. You and I have a despot, an owner, who loves us and will one day hold us accountable for how we steward what he gave us. Abba, Father or Dearest Father We can see in the New Testament the revelation of God as our Father. God as Father only occurs just a dozen times in the Old Testament, but over 200 times in the New Testament. The name Abba shows the intimacy and care of God for his children. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The Holy Spirit comes into a believer's life and brings intimacy with God. He enables you to call God Abba. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. God loves you more than you know. He is your Abba. God is your perfect Abba and loves you with an everlasting love. Here's the summary. Understanding the names of God should help you praise and worship Him better. Knowing the names of God should help improve your prayer life. Knowing the names of God should help you be more confident and less troubled in the midst of trials, tests, and tribulations. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe.